Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today is another in a series of videos about the Norda 901. Now, a couple things. I'm putting all these videos in a playlist which is accessible on my channel and I'll have links to that below. So if you wanna know everything about the Norda and if you're thinking of buying one, then watch all those videos in the series. I'm trying to make them very, very informative. So what I'm gonna do today is, I um, have a dedicated video showing you the dashboard of the Norden, how all the electronic controls work, because it is a little bit different. Even if you're familiar with the KTM 790 or 890 uh, electronics, it looks a little bit different than that, even though the underlying software I think is the same. So let me show you that right now. So the basics of the system work like this. You have this TFT display, which is very bright and very crisp. I wish it was a tiny bit larger, but it's, it's good enough. On the left hand switch gear, you have a four way controller that's very easy to use. This is actually one of the easiest to use electronics packages in the motorcycle industry right now. And I really appreciate the work that they put into it. Uh, you've got a back button here, which is the left button. Then you've got an up and a down button and you've got a set button or right button. So if you've used a computer before, if you use an iPad, a cell phone, any electronic device, it's fairly intuitive to use. But the best way is to show you. So let me reposition the camera on the dashboard and show you how this thing works and show you all the screens and the setup of the Norden 901. All right, I'm probably gonna kill my battery doing this with the, with the engine off, but let's go ahead and get this started. So when you start the motorcycle, you get the little Husqvarna logo, which is nice, okay? And then if there's any warning lights, those are gonna come up. You can clear the message by simply clicking any of the buttons on the uh, keypad there. So the main dashboard of the bike, and I have mine set up with the most information possible. This is gonna be how your bike comes from the factory. Uh, you've got here, so you've got a clock in the upper left. Along the very top of the screen, you've got all your different warning lights. You have a fuel gauge here on the left side, which is more accurate than the gauge on the 890 Adventure. It actually reads uh, starting at three quarters and then going down from there. So that's nice. You've got this bar here on the left for fuel. It indicates your fuel range, which you can set to either miles or kilometers. And it seems to be very accurate so far from what I've seen. You've got this large tachometer here. In the middle, you've got your uh, ABS setting, the riding mode that you're in, the gear position, which is not showing now because the bike's off, and you have the traction control indicator light. At the bottom, you have a very uh, big speedometer readout. And then on the right-hand side, they have what they call like your favorite information. And you can change what you want to display here. But the way it's going to come is it has date, uh, distance, trip time one, and battery. Now, I don't like those settings. I'm going to customize those for what I want to see, like miles per gallon and other things like that. I don't care about the date as I'm riding down the highway. So now to enter the menus of the bike to start changing settings, you simply hit the set button or the right toggle switch. And then you've got a selection here. You've got motorcycle, bike info, trip info, and settings. And you can see there's graphics on the screen that show you what you're doing. And that's kind of actually really helpful. So let's go into motorcycle. Uh, motorcycle controls the electronics of the bike, so the rider aids. You can go in here and change your ride mode, but I'm gonna show you a much faster way to do that. The ride mode, you've got street, rain, and off-road, and you should have the explore mode, but the dealer on my bike has not unlocked that yet because they don't have the software here in the US at the launch, um, but there will be a fourth mode. You've got ABS mode, which is road or off-road. Off-road ABS simply turns the ABS off to the back wheel. Uh, MTC is traction control and MSR is slip regulation, so it's, it's basically the same thing. Uh, you can turn that on or off, and it shows you a picture of the bike skidding the rear wheel if you turn that off, so that's very helpful. Interface, you can actually select between uh, how much information you want on the screen. So you can, you can get rid of the favorite screen if you don't want all that and just have a more simplified dashboard, or you can go to reduced where it really shows you hardly anything if you really want a basic screen. Uh, but most people are going to use the default layout there. If we go into bike info, uh, it's just going to give you different information about the motorcycle. So water temperature, uh, battery voltage, the fuel range, the odometer of the bike, uh, service information, and any warnings that are stored in the computer. Going into trip info, you are going to get things like your average speed, your average fuel consumption, and your distance, and the bike has two different trip computers. Now remember that a lot of this stuff you can program in your favorites to show on the main dashboard screen. If we go into settings, uh, this is where you can uh, change your favorites, which is something I need to do when I'm done shooting this video. 
Uh, you can, the quick select buttons, we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, you can program your shift lights. Um, because the bike's in break-in mode right now, I cannot customize that. It has a default shift light. It's 6,500 RPM for break-in purposes. Clock and date, you can change, obviously, the date and time. And you can change the units depending on where you live, the language. Uh, heating, okay, so heating is interesting that that's in here. Um, I know there's a, you can set that uh, for a shortcut. But if you had the integrated heated grips or the heated seat or the pillion seat heated, I think it's cool, by the way, you can get all that stuff integrated into the computer. Then this is where you would control those things. That's a little bit clunky of a way to control it by going through all these menus, but I know there's a way to put that into the shortcuts. Um, extra functions uh, doesn't have anything right now. So let's go back. Let's go, let's talk about the quick select buttons. So you see the, uh, there's four buttons here. The set goes into the menu. Uh, the back button just goes back. Now, the up and down buttons are also quick select buttons or, or whatever you want to call them, shortcuts, okay? Now, what those do, you can program them. And in the menu, so let's go back into here, into settings. Let me show you what I mean. So quick select or up and down. So the up arrow, you can program if you want it to go to your writing mode, your ABS mode, uh, traction control, trip computers, interface. You can even change the interface, have that as a shortcut. Uh, or no function. And I believe you can add the heated, heated grips and seats in here too if the bike was equipped with that. And on the down, you have the same selections here for the down button. So the way that I have mine set up is the up arrow is the riding mode so that when I'm switching from street to dirt or I want to go into rain mode, all I have to do is click the up arrow and then switch mode so I don't have to go into the menu. And then the down one I have is my ABS setting. So because when I go off road, there's two things I want to do. I want to change my riding mode and I want to change my ABS setting. So I've got those in the quick select. But other people, for those of you who don't ride off road, you won't care about that. So you could put something else on that there. So let me show you how that works. So right now, if you're in the main screen and I want to change my riding mode, all I do is click the up button. And now I'm in my, my riding mode selection. If I click the down button, I'm in the ABS selection. So that's how quick select works on this bike and it, and it works very, very well. So those are all the basics of how the electronics work on the motorcycle. I know I didn't go into detail about you know, how the traction control works, how the ABS works. We'll cover that in another video, but I wanted to really show you how the dashboard works. Now you've also got here, of course, the turn signals. I find it very strange that they do not have a four-way flasher on this bike. That seems very strange to me. Uh, you've got the high and low beam switch here. Cruise control is, act, is activated. The motorcycle has to be on but you toggle this left and then up and down here, that's very easy to use. And I think that's about it for the electronics. So thank you for watching this. I hope this was a useful overview of the dashboard and the electronic controls of the Norden 901. Now, questions, comments, things I missed, uh, any questions you have, put that down below. I'm compiling those questions or I'll just quickly answer them in the description, or I'm sorry, in the comments down below. So do that because I want you to have the most information possible if you're looking at purchasing uh, the Norden 901. Stay tuned for future series on this bike. We have a lot more videos coming. I'm just getting through the basic stuff right now uh, just to put all this information out there so you can make an informed buying decision. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Please support the channel and there's ways to do that in the description. Please shop at Rocky Mountain and Revzilla using my links. Uh, there's Patreon. There's all sorts of things you can do. Other than that, please ride safe and we'll see you out there. I'm doing the hand guards, a uh, few other, I'm, I'm putting on heated grips uh, today. So that's why I've kind of got things apart here. Uh, so anyway, let's start at the back. So you see these white side panels here. Underneath these side panels, what you have are these little toolboxes, which are really, really handy. So to get